Howdy. I did some nine months ago or something. I think several videos about the same theme. I are continuous ash plumes, antennas for the volcanoes, and there is a paper published on 29th July 2022. I guess that's from suspicious observers. Looking backwards and forwards in uh, Vulcanology, the collection of perspectives on the trajectory of science. No, I already have it. So that's the PDF, Volcanic Electrification, Recent Advances and Future Perspectives. It took two days to get it accepted. Very interesting. Abstract. The electrification of volcanic plumes has been described intermittently since at least the time of Pliny the Younger and the 1790 AD eruption of Vesuvius. Although sometimes disregarded in the past as secondary effects, recent work suggests that the electrical properties of volcanic ash plumes reveal intrinsic and otherwise inaccessible parameters of explosive eruptions. An increasing number of volcanic lightning studies across the last decade have shown that electrification is ubiquitous in volcanic plumes. Technological advances in engineering and numerical modeling, paired with close observation of recent eruptions and dedicated laboratory studies, shock tube and current impulse experiments, current impulse, show that charge generation and electrical activity are related to the physical, chemical and dynamic processes underpinning the eruption itself. Hmm. Refining our understanding of volcanic plume electrification will continue advancing the fundamental understanding of eruptive processes to improve volcanic volcano monitoring. <laughs> Realizing this goal, however, requires an interdisciplinary approach at the intersection of volcanology, atmospheric science, atmospheric electricity and engineering. Our paper summarizes the rapid and steady progress achieved in recent volcanic lighting research and provides a vision for future developments in the growing field. Let's go to the conclusion sections, because they are also very interesting. And many times you can... <laughs> You read the abstract and the conclusion section, and then you know, is it worth reading or not? I have to some amount, I think I wrote the whole paper, I don't remember. I just stumbled across this, since I had to close some... What are they? Windows. Where is the conclusion? Do they have any conclusions? Hmm. Nature experiments in comparison, high speed 5000 frames per second, yeah. They have very good equipment. Of near vent lightning at Sakurachima. High speed 30k video frames of discharge in shock tube experiment with gas ash particles mixtures. No centimetric scale on the nozzle. Ah. Yes, now I remember, probably. The thing is, they just took ash. They don't have any gases in there, but they get... <laughs> Despite that, the lightning strike, and they, in a way, don't really take any electromagnetic currents into account between 
ground and atmosphere, telar currents and such. <clears throat> yeah, and they talk also about ice crystals. <laughs> now let's just have this last read here. Despite these limitations, volcanic lightning detection fills an important gap in the suit of monitoring tools used by volcano observations. I would hope they would make MRIs, MRIs from volcanoes. Let me draw you a volcano. Vulcano goes down and up. And many have noticed every now and then there's just a cloud top on the volcano sometimes it's going down like this on the sides and i have to start again another volcano and the sometimes you have a cloud here which might go a little bit up and down. And I was thinking, drawing a scatterman here. Because that's the torus of energy. That's where it in a way spreads into the atmosphere. And it will depend on how many layers, how high it is, what are the circumstances. And the clouds here are like the magnetic ring around the torus, the dots of the squatter man. But anyway, where we have, where have we been? The value of long-range lightning sensors is that they can assist by early recognition of ash-rich eruptions that send a plume above freezing attitudes. So they can vary in height and also the layers of the atmospheres, the thickness of them can vary and also the strength of where you go from one to the other double layer convergence zones. By comparison, there can be several to tens of minutes between satellite images available in real time and views can be observed by cloud cover. Obscured by cloud cover, sorry. Infrasound signals may be affected by local wind or complex atmospheric propagation. And seismic data may not clearly distinguish eruptive and pre-eruptive ground motion. Uh, globally detected lightning is becoming increasingly integrated at volcano observation observation what at volcano observatories and volcanic ash advisory centers around the world including in Chong, Kamchatka and Argentina recent recommendations for operational volcano monitoring in the US has also been updated to include Volcanic electrification. Flinders et al. Check it out. It's under review. So there's at least one paper I'm waiting for. Flinders. Get on with it. He cannot do anything. There are some others now watching it. So, future directions in volcanic lighting research. Looking ahead, new laboratory experiments would be valuable to detail charging mechanisms under the variable conditions dictated by volcanic activity and the surrounding environment. Parameters such as grain size distribution, grain composition, temperature, pressure, and volatile content, H2O and SO2 and other species. CO2, as I learned recently, should be further explored. Although previous experiments have provided an initial framework, the influence of volcanic <coughs> particles or am on charging and discharge characteristics should be tested at the laboratory scale. 
to improve interpretations of the remotely sensed data sets. Where were moreover? No. We expect that these experimental results may be combined with existing lightning models from meteorology to build electrification modules into high resolution numerical simulations of volcanic plumes and their electrical behavior. Moreover, the impacts of lightning on volcanic plumes and the phases with them, within them leave many avenues for further exploration. It has been shown that lightning alters volcanic ash properties, but it is not yet known how these physical, chemical and magnetic changes. They almost said it. Volcanic changes may influence volcanic ash on a broader scale. <clears throat> there is also a potentially measurable effect on the atmospheric properties surrounding the discharge channel. Yeah, it is called a Birkeland current. The rapid melting of solid phases coupled with reduction oxidation of volatile components in the volcanic plume may produce a number of unique chemical species important for various Earth system processes, including biological activity. Hmm. Volcanic lightning research is rapidly moving forward through multidisciplinary studies and technological advances. Yes, so now they say it. Only multidisciplinary studies will bring anything forward. Otherwise, it will be stuck in place. Thanks for this nice sentence. Research efforts in the coming decade will continue to extend volcanic lightning observations to a wider range of explosive activity following a multi-instrumental approach, combining the various ground-based and satellite-based remote sensing instruments will be key to constraining lightning properties, plume dynamics and microphysics and macrophysics. This should be taken into account too. Paired with long-distance lightning detection, the development of miniaturized and cost-effective near-field sensors to simultaneously monitor lightning properties, e.g. electromagnetic fields, infrasonic signals, and eruption plume properties, e.g. SO2 content, grain size distribution, and CO2, will enable more direct analysis of smaller eruptions where lightning may go undetected by global networks. Each of these developments will support our ability to incorporate near real-time analysis of lightning data to characterize volcanic plumes in operational settings. Constraining eruption source parameters such as plume height, mass eruption, mass eruption rate and ash water content, water content, water content using volcanic lightning will ultimately play a growing role in forecasting volcanic ash hazards in the atmospheres on the ground. <sighs> the study of volcanic lightning has so far bridged the disciplines of geology, atmospheric science, atmospheric electricity, remote sensing and electrical engineering. In years to come, it will likely be relevant to many other scientific fields due to the complexity of this natural phenomena. Not really. Are you surprised that volcanoes are a part of nature? Like, you know, they are like connecting stuff from deep down, like really high up, as we have seen in Tonga and others. But now I have to show you another paper. Gregory, give me a second. So, introduction to plasma tectonics and electrical geology. Solar wind coupling to planetary circuits, lightning tells the stellar transformer story. Bruce Leyburn and Giovanni P. Gregory. I will put links below to both of the papers. You can make your own conclusions about these. Where is it? Here. Jewel antennas. Sea urchin spines. So just imagine. No, don't imagine. 
look and think for yourself. Vulcano, feel, and it will make the connections. And as more up you go, it will be as below. There will be many layers in which they might act differently. So as above, so below. And there's also, I think, a very strong connection between volcanic eruptions and weather, or weather systems. Because very often you have bad weather as a volcanic eruption occurs, or there is nearby, or there is just a big difference between high and low pressure. So there is a big difference in charges. And this will all interact to, together. So it will, take, it will take the path of least resistance. And usually, since volcanoes are already, like, you know, ready, there is a connection to deep below. And with the clouds, with the cloud hat or helmet of a volcano, which is not erupting or in the Arabs or whatsoever, you can see that there is energy flowing. Otherwise, there wouldn't be clouds, because clouds are plasma, they are charged. And sometimes they discharge in form of lightning and wind and rain and all these kind of things. Rain is not a... Wind is not a discharge, it's just ionic winds, the magnetic fields of the weather systems, as magnets work. There is a current, and since we are talking about Weather, it's wind. That's the current. But anyway, I will leave it here. I will put a link below to those two papers, if you are interested. Take your time. Read them. Make your own conclusions. Don't believe me. <laughs> hmm. I just try to bring forth this kind of... How to put it? Circuits. Circuits of knowledge. Tap into them. They're very interesting. There's so much energy flowing in those. Thanks.